Metasploit. Metasploit is um, a tool that um, basically what it does is that it allows you to take all of the off-the-shelf tools, no, not all of them, but many of the off-the-shelf tools, puts them into a single tool that you can use them. So let's go ahead and just do it. To open up Metasploit, you can either go to exploitation tools, right? and there's our Metasploit framework there, or you can go MSF Hansel. And what this does is that it opens up an interactive console for Metasploit, and inside of Metasploit, there's thousands of tools. So that's the advantage of it. It's not always the latest and greatest in terms of exploits and tools, but it saves you a lot of time if you're working on, say, you know, a vulnerable system. You can search here to go and find the tool that's going to work against that system. Once again, this is a whole week-long course on how to use Metasploit, but I'll just show you a little bit. First of all, you got to know that the terminology. These are exploits. These are Essentially, these are hacks. These are tools that allow you to get inside of a system. Auxiliary, okay, those are all of the tools that don't fit into the other categories. <laughs> that are not, that are not, they're not payloads, encoders, NOPs, invasion, or exploits. There's 1,220 of those, okay? These are, often these are uh, scanners and password crackers in this area. These are post-exploitation, so after you've cracked open the system, what can you do with it? Can you turn on the camera? Can you turn on the, the uh, a key log? Can you, you know, there's a whole lot of things that you can do. Can you scan the other systems to be able to pivot to other machines on the network? That's all gonna be in post-exploitation. Payloads are what you leave behind, okay? Once I cracked open the system, I got to leave behind on the system something that allows me to be able to connect to that system you know, whenever I want to. That's a payload. Then we have encoders. These are things that will change the encoding of the tool. NOPs are called null operations. This is often used in developing your own exploits. And then we have nine evasion. So... These are ways that we can change the tool to help it get past antivirus. Now, the way that you need to, to find what you're looking for, and this is kind of the key, now the first stages of Metasploit is, how do I find what I'm looking for? Exactly, I see yeah. that there's, I, I see that there's like, you know, 8,000 modules here, right? How do I find what I'm looking for? Well, here's how you find it. You just use the keyword search, and then you tell it what type of module I'm looking for, type. And say, I want to export. Of course, we always want exploits, right? <laughs> exploits. And, and then, I, then I can then give it a keyword, or I can go platform, which platform is kind of, it's all synonymous with operating system. You can go Windows. And then say we are looking for the Eternal Blue exploit. Eternal Blue, for those of you who don't know, I do uh, an expansive um, analysis of Eternal Blue and getting started becoming a master hacker because it's one of those exploits that was so widely used and so dangerous that it allowed basically the NSA, it was developed by the NSA in the US to hack into just about any Windows system, right? And when it, was, when it got released onto the internet, okay, in 2017, so six years ago now, it was used by criminal hackers to be able to do Petya, not Petya, wannabe, many, many ransomwares. It caused billions of dollars worth of damage. So we can find that, okay, by simply using that search, and you can see it came up with three different ones. And then here's the original, 2017, was MS17010. Then here's one that has uh, this one right here, a PS exec. This basically just allows you to connect if it's already been compromised. And then here's the one with the double pulsar remote code execution. And right, so we've got three different ones. If we were to not put in exploit and just look for the eternal blue, we'll find a few more auxiliary modules. Well, maybe not. <laughs> Let's see, Windows, yeah. There is a scanner. There's a eternal romance. There it is right there. Yep. Let's see if we can't. Let's just take out 
we should be able to find the auxiliary module. Let's go height and go auxiliary. And this is a, a vulnerability scanner for your terminal. There should be one there. There we go. And this one will go ahead and test to see whether or not the system is vulnerable to Eternal Blue, and this one here is basically checking to see whether or not there's the remote code execution taking place on the system already. So somebody's already compromised. So that's how you would go about finding, you know, you can, you know, there's there's all kinds of modules in here. Let's do, do one more search of a search. All right, and let's go type auxiliary, and let's go say uh, MySQL. And MySQL, we got 14, 14 modules. These are auxiliary modules, right? And auxiliary modules aren't necessarily exploits. Sometimes they are, like here you see MySQL authentication bypass, hash dump. Here it's an enumeration module. These are scanners. Here's one for testing the login. Here's getting the version of MySQL. So lots of different modules in here. So Metasploit is one of those white hat hacker tools. We have seen it being used as well by black hats, uh, especially if we're talking about a systems, systems like we saw just on Shodan, where we know that there are vulnerabilities there. There's, there's widely known vulnerabilities. One doesn't have to go and create their own exploit you know, we can just go and grab that exploit out of Metasploit and go ahead and take control of the system. I think the question is going to be, uh, Occupy the Web, you've got training on all this stuff, right? So, um, I mean, you, you're only just touching on it on, on, in this video. Sorry, go on. Yeah, we're, we're just, just touching on each one of them. We have classes in each one of these. Hey, David, we're, um, what we're doing now is we're going to go and just to test this Eternal Blue in Metasploit, the, win, the Eternal Blue exploit against a vulnerable Windows 7 system, Great. just to show just to show what it looks like. Right? That's fantastic, yeah. So what I've done is I've loaded the exploit right here, I, the use command. It goes ahead by default and it puts in a payload, okay, reverse TCP. And then I can do show options, this shows me all the options that I need to set to make this exploit work. And you can see here, required column. Now, uh, if it says required, that means you have to put it in. Right? And here you can see our host. Our host stands for remote hosts. That's the target. Here's the target port. This you can't change because this is an attack against SMB. So what we need to set is the our host, right? And you can see it's already automatically set the L host, that's us, the attacker. So it looks like the only thing we need to set with this particular exploit is the R host. And we can do that by using the set command. Set R host. Okay. And that's going to be one nine. This is the uh, IP address of the Windows 7 system. And it's going to be 109. So we've said we want to attack 192, 168, 100. Nine. We want it to communicate back to us at 192.168.100.101. And so all that we need to do now is simply say exploit and the system will attempt. Now I say attempt because it doesn't always work, you know, unlike the, the TikTok videos where that <laughs> always works every time. In reality, hacks can some, even the well-worn well-known hacks don't work all the time. That's reality. That's, you know, it's not 30 seconds unless you take over, <laughs> you know, the world's most secure server. <laughs> to take over the world's most secure server, you might spend years to get inside of it. All right, but here we have an attack that's well-known against a vulnerable system, and it still doesn't work every time. So we'll keep our fingers crossed that it works for us this time, and we'll just go exploit and keep our fingers crossed and see what happens. You can see it comes back and says, it's likely vulnerable, and it opened up a interpreter session. Yay! Nice. nice. So it did work this time, easily and simply. We could do a TikTok video now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so now we're inside the Windows system, okay? So we can, to check to see whether or not we're actually in, we can go Notice that we're getting some air, communication air here. That kind of worries me, but let's see. 
sys info should tell us, yep, there we are. We're in OTW's Windows 7 system, right? Or we could do a, a dir to check those directories. Oh, some TikTok on the system. <laughs> and WannaCry too. This is a slide we say I use for, for uh, various, uh, these are actually exploits that I've developed to work on the system. Uh, and then, of course, we could also just do uh, ifcontent to see what the IP address is on. So we're inside, we are inside and controlling a Windows system. Now, once again, this is not, it's not always this easy. So I don't want to deceive your viewers that, you know, it's, you can just go ahead and point and click, you know, at a, at a Windows system and immediately take it over. Even a Windows 7 system, because many of them, not all of them, but most of them are already patched, right? This, I kept this Windows 7 system unpatched for years and years and years just for this purpose. But this is how Metasploit works. You know, you need to define the right exploit, right? the correct exploit that's going to match the operating system and the various features, characteristics of that system. Sometimes the characteristics are gonna be ports that are open. Sometimes it's gonna be an application that's on that system. Sometimes in this case, it's gonna be what version of SMB is on that system. In this case, SMB1 is vulnerable, okay? If it's running SMB3, it's not gonna be vulnerable. So that's Metasploit.